Today's video is brought to you by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club delivering amazing boxes of top shelf goods from under the radar brands. Every month, Bespoke Post introduces its members to cool new products, outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more even live oysters based on a preference quiz that they fill out. It's free to join and you can skip a month anytime. I recently got sent this. This was their Weekender box and appropriately it contains a weekend bag. Great heavy canvas construction, metal in there so that, uh, yeah, just for extra strength so you can pack this thing full and not have to worry about it. Every box has about $70 in retail value but costs only $45 and you can preview the box before it ships and decide if you want to keep it, swap it or skip the month for no charge. Bespoke's lineup is constantly changing every month. It's great for you, but also a great gift. Another thing they sent me was the brew box, which contains, obviously, a beer making kit. That's right, everything you need is in the box. There's the ingredients themselves. There's this giant one gallon bottle. The, uh, I don't even know what this is, but it's all part of the box. Everything you need is included in there. Right now, you guys can get 20% off your first box by going to bspk.me forward slash top tens 20 or just clicking the link in the description below and entering top tens 20 at checkout. And now, back to today's video. Strictly speaking, there aren't a lot of cults out there doing stuff that we'd consider normal. The moment the label cult is applied, things get a bit weird. But not every cult is created equal and some are very much more bizarre than others. Number 10, the coconut cult. The world produces about 62 million metric tons of coconut every year. It's safe to say that it's a pretty popular food item, but basing an entire cult around them seems, well, sketchy at best. Nevertheless, German nudist and cult leader August Engelhardt was devoted to the coconut and went far out of his way to make it central to his belief system. Engelhardt, being a nudist, was a fan of being out in the sun, so he decided to set up a community of like-minded individuals in Papua New Guinea. Guinea. For 18 years, Engelhardt stayed on the island eating almost nothing but coconuts. Engelhardt had become convinced that the sun was the source of all life and the coconut, because it grew at the top of palm trees closer to the sun than any other food, was clearly the best food in the world. Makes perfect sense. Using money from an inheritance, Engelhardt published literature about his beliefs. He wanted to develop an order of the sun so that followers could come and worship the sun with him. And it worked, especially since he was using his money to ship people there. At its peak, the cult had 30 members, but they had a bad habit of dying. Illness and accidents plagued the cult, which was not surprising given that they had no doctors and ate almost nothing but coconuts on a tropical island that was known for tropical disease. Near the end of his life, Engelhardt was in horrible physical condition. He couldn't walk, was severely malnourished, and he was afflicted with ulcers. He weighed under 100 pounds and was having seizures, all thanks to a diet of non-stop coconut and and generally poor living conditions. Number 9. Raylism Cosmic Orgasms Raelians are one of the few UFO cults that have achieved mainstream media attention for some years and still have not imploded or faded into obscurity. The cult, known formally as the International Raelian Movement, dates all the way back to 1974. At its core, Raelism teaches that mankind was created by an alien race and is very much concerned with sex. In fact, part of the church involves what is called the Order of Rails Angels, women who are meant to be sexual partners for the aliens when they come back to Earth. They're not supposed to have sex with any humans. There is an exception, of course, as the women can have sex with each other and they'll be taught how to please the aliens by Rael himself, a 75-year-old Frenchman named Claude Veron. Of course. These women are all handpicked by Rael for their beauty. All Raelians are encouraged to engage in various sensual practices with one another. They have regular sensual meditation workshops in the wilderness toward the goal of attaining something called the Cosmic Orgasm. You can see how this might entice some new members. In fact, there are well over a hundred thousand Raelians worldwide. Number 8. No Soap and No Sex the movement for the restoration of the Ten Commandments of God was a cult founded in Uganda in the 1980s. What at first seemed like an eccentric and maybe even goofy take on Christianity quickly and tragically escalated 
into an absolute nightmare. The End of the Cult is one of the most shocking stories ever, and it's a painful reminder of just how far people can take beliefs. The cult was founded after two men believed they had a vision of the Virgin Mary. They founded their group under the guise of following the teachings of Christ, and were, by their own understanding, adhering to the Ten Commandments. As a part of their curious interpretation of scripture, members were not allowed to have sex or bathe with soap. Even talking was forbidden, lest someone break the Ninth Commandment of bearing false witness. Many members learned how to use sign language as a result, which was somehow considered to be a loophole. Cold members lived an agrarian lifestyle, growing things like beans and potatoes. Despite this, fasting was also a ritual, and on Mondays and Fridays, they were only permitted a single meal. Members were also required to sell their possessions, including their homes, and give the money to the cult. Again, of course they were. For many, being worked like a slave, malnourished and stressed, took its toll. The endgame was the apocalypse. Members had been assured that Armageddon was approaching on New Year in the year 2000. When that didn't happen, things took a dark turn. People who sold everything wanted their money back. Cult members quit en masse and wanted answers. The apocalypse was pushed back to March, and a massive party was held. There, they slaughtered everyone. The building held over 500 people. They sealed the windows and the doors, and they blew it up. When police investigated, they found hundreds more dead at different locations, many stabbed or poisoned as much as three weeks earlier. Number 7. Eating Trash The Brethren is the unofficial name of a cult started by former Marine Jimmy Roberts. The main motivation behind the group is to shun material things, which means, in the eyes of most, cult members are simply homeless vagrants. They don't own property, they don't have anything more than the clothes on their backs. When they need things, they're permitted to do random jobs to make money, but part of their survival methods may include eating out of the trash. This netted the group the name Garbage Eaters in some places. The cult so far sounds remarkably eccentric, but relatively harmless. However, that was not necessarily the case. Roberts was the absolute ruler of the cult, and he had strict rules. Men and women had to be separated. No images were allowed on anything, and those that existed were to be covered. Children were not allowed to play. New converts had to give up all of their earthly possessions and accept that they were in the end times. Members were divided up into smaller subgroups with no knowledge of the other groups. Roberts died in 2015, and little information is available of what became of his followers. Number 6. The True Way Cowboys Known as Chen Dao, the True Way cult is a UFO cult from Taiwan. Their central belief system was one of those confusing UFO ones about how the world is trillions of years old, our souls have existed for almost as long, and God somehow visits us on a UFO. They achieved some infamy in the world at large thanks to their misfire apocalypse plans in the late 1990s. Many members of the group moved to Garland, Texas. Allegedly, this was only because Garland sounds like Godlands. Once in Texas, members were encouraged to dress like all white cowboys, complete with white cowboy hats. Again, this just seemed to be a when in Texas situation. Over 150 members moved into the same community to wait for God to return to the house of their founder in March 1998. Surprise, surprise, God didn't show up. Many members returned to Taiwan, and a few of them stuck together and moved to New York, where they continued to wear cowboy hats and await God's return, pushing back the date of the apocalypse every time it failed to materialize. Number 5. Coppermism Piracy the Church of Coppermism plays a little fast and loose with the definition of cult, but it's apparently a recognized church in Sweden, so even if it's something of a joke, it's a very well-structured one. While things like talking, while things like taking the sacraments are sacred to Catholics, taking files is sacred to Coppermists. Basically, it's a religion based around file sharing and or piracy on the internet. The church has long denied any relation to the Pirate Bay, another Swedish group dedicated to anti-copyright laws and file sharing. The copy and paste symbols are sacred, and the only real tenet is that all information should be freely copied and shared. So basically, you should pirate things like games, movies, books, and music. In their parlance, it's fundamental to communication and the spirit of information that is freely accessible to all. <laughs> <laughs> Number 4. Aetherius Society Prayer Batteries Another UFO cult, the Aetherius Society dates back to 1955. Not nearly as apocalyptic as far too many other cults, Aetherius began when its founder, George King, was contacted by aliens who told him he was supposed to lead an interplanetary parliament. This began his relationship with Aetherius, a Venusian who, contrary to what you might think, lived on Saturn. Basically, Aetherians believed that there are planetary masters out there, beings who worked in a kind of intergalactic government. These masters are masters in a spiritual sense, and people like Jesus and Buddha were also in their ranks. The goal just to make the universe a better place. 
So that's not so bad. Part of their belief is that spiritual energy can be harnessed and stored and used for good. That means we could prevent natural disasters and other bad things like war. So group members get together and they pray and they direct those prayers into spiritual batteries. The batteries collect the prayer power and it can be let out as needed to prevent bad things. Now, this may sound goofy to many of us, but keep in mind this seems to be as extreme as the Aetherius society gets. Compared to most other groups, they seem relatively harmless and well-intentioned. Number three, John from Military Parades. Cargo cults date back to World War II and are a strange phenomenon to consider. The people in Melanesia, places like Vanuatu and New Guinea and thereabouts, had very limited contact with the outside world at the time. During the war, allies were arriving on the islands, often with a lot of gear in the form of airdrops. So try to imagine you were living your life and some group of people far more advanced than you dropped their technology on you from the sky. What would you think? Well, for the cargo cults, it began a fascinating culture of religious worship. Soldiers would interact with islanders and trade with them, offering the kinds of things that islanders had never dreamed of. It must have been a lot like the idea of humans and Vulcans first meeting in Star Trek. After the war, all the soldiers left, but the islanders really had no idea why or where they went. So they started engaging in rituals that they hoped would bring them back. On the island of Tanner, locals had met a man named John Frum, and he became central to their belief system. They fashioned their own military uniforms and led parades to try and bring him back, believing Frum would bring gifts and abundance from above. Some believed there was never a real John Frum. He was a delusion or even a local pretending to be a Westerner. But whatever the truth of the matter, the fact is the locals built airstrips and more to bring him back. Each February the 15th, known as John Frum Day, they hold parades and ceremonies in the hopes that Frum will return with things like televisions, medicine, and Coca-Cola. Number two, the foot readers. Dating back to 1987, the Japanese cult name as Ho no Hana was very into feet. Leader Hogan Fukunaga could read your fortune based on your feet, or, well, so he claimed. More importantly, if he didn't read your fortune, things could go bad really quickly. Members of the cult needed their feet inspected, or else they risked death. Also, a foot reading would cost $900 or so. Apparently, some people paid him nearly a million dollars. Members were encouraged to spend on scrolls and other healing items. They dropped thousands on five-day-long seminars and other wastes of money meant to heal or otherwise improve their lives. Fukunaga himself would read feet, as would other high-ranking members. At some point, people began to suspect that this was a bit shady, and the man was just taking the money and spending it on frivolous items. He was eventually sued for fraud and ordered to pay back millions. Number 1. Freedomite Pacifist Nude Bombings If you really want your cult to stand out, consider basing it in some fundamentally contradictory ideals. Originally from Russia, the Freedomites were a group who had fled Russian intolerance and persecution for the freedom and good times of Saskatchewan, Canada in the early 1900s. They then set about blowing things up and espousing a belief in anarchy, all of which they did in the nude. One of the group's central tenets is pacifism, which combined with anarchism somehow led to various acts of arson from the 1920s to the 1960s. In 1958, two of the members were killed by their own bombs. They bombed schools and the local rail bridge, and all of that was done in the nude as well. They were very much against materialism and government interference in everyday life, and also apparently clothing. Nearly everything the group did reflected that in some way. So I really hope you found this video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.